Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your trusted weather source, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype. Here on your Saturday, March 8th, 2025. Let's take a look at what we're tracking here for today as an active pattern is going to remain ahead for the next couple of weeks. We'll track those next several storm systems that are going to be impacting the country, especially the one going into next weekend. That one looks like it's going to be the biggest of the storms, uh, kind of on par of what we recently had just last week in the middle of the country. And then we'll also give you a March climate outlook as well and give you an update that's going to take you right through the rest of the month of March and going into April. Now, before we get going, any new subscribers out there would like to say thank you for coming on board. And if you haven't yet officially joined us just yet, what you waiting for, my friend? Please hit that subscribe button in that lower right hand corner. Hit the notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, if you like what you see, please leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. It does help with that almighty YouTube algorithm. All right, let's take a look at the big picture here as we're looking at our satellite imagery here from coast to coast. We got an upper level low that's kind of kicking out of the areas here of into areas of Colorado and New Mexico, and it's setting up some thunderstorms here in the Dallas area. We'll take a look at that in here in just a second. We got some storms here coming up into the areas of the Pacific Northwest, a little rain up that way, but California right now not looking too bad here on your Saturday. Now, as far as our watches and warnings are concerned, again, we got a couple of uh, severe thunderstorm warnings around the Dallas area. We're going to show you here in a second. And uh, winter part of this, yeah, winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories here into the Texas Panhandle, as well as the Oklahoma Panhandle and back into northern New Mexico and southern Colorado as that upper level low starts to swing on out. Got some pretty good fog along the Gulf Coast here for this morning. All right, let's look at the big picture here as we're looking at our current map of this system is kind of draped across the south here. This upper low is going to really be the main weather player here as this kind of is going to track down here along the Gulf Coast. It's going to set up not only the active weather we're seeing here with the severe weather across Dallas, it's going to track it right down here toward the south here. Again, you see some rains up here in the Pacific Northwest as well. A little snows up there across coming into the Great Lakes and into the Northeast, but really not looking too bad here for a lot of the country. So let's go ahead and focus in on some of these storms here this morning. As you see some of the severe thunderstorm warnings down here, just to the end of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And these got some hail with it as well. Uh, got pretty cold corn with this. So again, some very gusty winds, brief heavy rains, a lot of lightning with this as well. And these storms will continue to be an issue as this disturbance continues to push off toward the east. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Storms Prediction Center as we're looking at that day one outlook here uh, for today. You can see that where this is going to be kind of traversing uh, as it kind of moves down here toward the east and to the south. So we're talking about, again, extending out of, out of Texas and kind of moving right along this way and moving into Louisiana and down in toward the Florida panhandle here. Uh, for today. There will be a tornado risk with this. Pretty low though, uh, generally we're running about 2% there uh, from Louisiana, East Texas, over to the Florida Panhandle. So we're talking about right into that zone right there. And of course, with that, obviously there will be a chance of some gusty winds as well, excess of 55 miles per hour. Again, isolated to scattered uh, severe weather, not out of the question here for today. Let's go take a look at that day two outlook. Let's see how that one looks here as we go take a look at day two. And again, we'll look at that and we'll, again, we'll see that kind of shift over toward the east there. So still that marginal risk for severe weather uh, kind of coming into South Georgia and the Florida Panhandle, parts of southeastern Alabama going in towards your Sunday. So uh, something to track as we go into Sunday as well. Day three, uh, looking a little bit better there. Just kind of so maybe a few rumbles of thunder here right along the Carolina coast here and down here towards South Florida as you go into your Monday starting the new work week. So overall, not bad, at least for this one. Next weekend, though, that might be a different uh, story. Now, as far as the heavy rain threat, again, just for today and tomorrow, really here, uh, predominantly going to stay right along the Gulf Coast. So we're looking at, again, southwest Georgia a little bit, Florida Panhandle, some brief heavy rains and some pockets of flooding uh, couldn't ruled out, be ruled out there. And that'll continue into your day two as well. You see it there kind of pop into that same general area there where that severe weather, obviously, is going to be southeast Georgia and northern Florida uh, getting in on that heavy rain action going into your Sunday, Monday. Don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the weather pattern. Um, we're looking at the 500 millibar wind level here. It's kind of easy to kind of track these lows. What we're going to be tracking here is a series of them that's going to be impacting the area over the next couple of weeks. So this is our first low that's going to be ejecting out of New Mexico. Uh, that's what's responsible for setting off that weather there across Texas. It's going to drag across the southeast here as we go through this weekend. It's kind of our main player here for the weekend. So you kind of see this thing um, shift off toward the east here as we go into the day on your Sunday. You've seen the low here right, right there. Again, that'll be setting off that active weather along the Gulf Coast as that tracks off toward the east. And that'll be moving on off and still lingering into your Monday as well across the southeast. So rains in Alabama and Georgia as this kicks off the southeast coast. 
Then we'll turn our attention to this next system. This one's a weaker one just coming in out here. Uh, this one will kind of fall apart. Really not to worry about that one too much as this kind of moves on in. Slides it across Texas as we go into Wednesday night and Thursday. You can see what's left of it there. And then we're going to watch this next big trough. That's the one that we'll get to watch going into next weekend and how that is going to evolve into a pretty serious storm system. Again, we're going to watch that big low here. Come on in here. This is going into a Friday. So we're coming in across areas of Arizona. So a very strong jet stream with this as this thing begins to emerge and then starts to track off toward the north and east. So here we go, going into late in the day on Friday. So we got a very strong low pressure system right here. You've got a divergent flow. So once again, we'll be watching Friday going into Saturday for the potential for some severe weather to get set up and a potential tornado outbreak with, with winds that strong. It's just a question of instability. Again, always that same problem we're talking about March uh, severe weather. It's instability and heat. Uh, the dynamics are definitely there. We saw it like similar with the last one. This one gets cranking, gets pushing off toward the east as we go into your Saturday morning. Uh, with some severe weather here, it looks like lining up here across areas of Missouri, coming back in toward the Texas and air, uh, Louisiana area. And that'll continue to push off toward the east with some sort of squall line that'll kind of uh, move into the southeast. So again, a little bit of slight bend back here on the trough in there that's going to negative tilt that adds to additional uh, wind shear and uh, with that as, as this begins to pivot off toward the east. So again, we'll be watching this going into Friday and Saturday in the next weekend. And then this thing begins to push on off the eastern seaboard. And we'll say goodbye to that system right there. There's another one behind this one as well. There's another one that's developing right there. There's another low, again, another tense one. This one's a little bit further north. And we'll have to watch that one going into the 19th and 20th, although that one does not appear to be quite as bad as what we're seeing there uh, going in toward next weekend into the 14th and 15th. This kind of moves off toward the east. And then we got another system there tracking across the south going into the 22nd right through there. So there's that, that another one right there. So as you can see here, for the next couple of weeks, we got a very, very amplified and a very progressive pattern, multiple chances for severe weather. So definitely need to keep it tuned right here for updates as we go uh, through the next couple of weeks. We're going to look at the, the pressure anomaly map. This is kind of an easy uh, function to kind of check and see where the big storms are. The blues and the greens, that's your low pressure. Obviously, the oranges and the reds, that's kind of your, your higher pressure region. So Again, what you kind of what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for the the big ones here. So this is a pretty decent low here. You see the green here, kind of tracking along the along the, the Canadian American border. That's really not not too big a deal, but that's that's a decent one there. That'll be tracking up along the border there. That'll move on up into Canada, and then we'll watch uh, a couple of weak systems going into next week. But it's that big boy here. It starts to form right here. Uh, it's a little elongated in here. You see it at 984 pressure here, 991 up here. Uh, but uh, again, a pretty robust system here. This pushes us off toward the east here, uh, 985, 983. To give you an idea, the last big storm we had that was uh, that was last week, it was 980. So this is pretty comparable, 983. Again, a strong Category 1 hurricane equivalent with the pressure there. And this is pushes off toward the east and again starts to clear on out. And then we got the, another one behind this one. There's the, that, that one right there, that going into the 18th and 19th. That's, again, that's another strong one. You start seeing the greens, you know you got a pretty strong system there. And uh, that pushes off toward the east again. This one does not appear to be quite as bad, but it looks like it ejects off the into the northeast going into the 19th to 20th of March. And this pulls on out. There's a little weak system there across the south on the 21st. Yeah, it kind of shows up very nicely right there. And then as we get to the end of this run, it looks like we get some ridging and some uh, clear weather here across the east. Yeah, that looks pretty guy good heading toward the 22nd. You see that there. And then we got our next system uh, back here in the middle of the country to watch uh, beyond that. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the short term. Let's look at the high resolution model data here. Uh, what we're going to be watching, obviously, for this weekend is our upper level low here. And there's the rain and thunderstorms with, associated with that, as that's going to push along the Gulf Coast here uh, for this weekend going into Monday. So, again, you folks in the southeast, enjoy your Saturday because going into Sunday and Monday, eh, it's going to be a little wet. So you can see the rain here coming into Alabama and Georgia. And, again, as that upper level low kind of swings out of Texas, still lingering across Alabama going into your Sunday night and into Monday morning. And then we'll watch another storm system coming here out on the West Coast uh, going into Monday, starting that new work week. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the European model. Again, it will track it beyond the weekend. Obviously, we've got to deal with the wet weather across the south. I'll show that one more time for you there. Kind of swinging across the southeast. A lot of the country really not looking too bad, except for the areas of the uh, up there in the northwest and maybe little snows across the northeast. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the European areas. We're going to say goodbye to this system. We're going to track this one gone. We got that one week system and then we're going to watch California. California's going to get a lot of snows here, folks, over the next couple of weeks with the progressive pattern and a lot of snows going on and heavy rains out there. So we're going to watch this week one first. This is the week one coming out of the West Coast. 
This one's not really the big one. That one will kind of fall apart as it moves inland. And then we'll see the, the other one come on in. There's the big one right there, as you can see. We're going to have some very heavy mountain snows across the Sierra Nevada. A lot of rains across California going into the 12th and 13th of March as this continues to press off toward the east. And then we'll see how this thing develops. Where the low develops and how it tracks is going to be critical on who gets the bad weather, who doesn't, who gets the potential heavy snows. I still think there's a blizzard part of this. Again, 983 millibars uh, on the back side of this. Very similar to what we saw with the last system. So we're expecting a blizzard conditions. And then we'll watch the severe weather element of this going into Friday and Saturday to see how this develops. It includes Friday, although the, here kind of going late Friday when this thing starts to develop. The timing on this could also change depending on the speed. So again, watch for updates throughout the week as this moves off toward the east in the next weekend. Uh, confidence pretty moderate here that we're going to see a pretty good robust storm with this thing. Uh, going into next weekend. Now, beyond that, of course, we're talking speculative zone here. We're looking at the overall weather pattern here. It still looks very progressive here as we've got another storm system here uh, coming across the high plains, a little snowy, little snowy little storm right there uh, coming in toward uh, the, the heading of the 18th and 19th of the month there on March. Uh, not looking too bad with that system. Although this one was looking like it was going to fire some more severe weather in the south. I don't think we're going to see that, at least on this current update, on this current rendition. We'll see about that as this pushes off toward the east, and then it gets a little more robust. This might get a little more severe going in toward the 21st here uh, across areas of the southeast. Got a nice little cool shot here coming down. Again, another little weak system out here on the west coast on the 20th and 21st. And then this pushes off toward the east, heads on off the eastern seaboard. And then again, remember, we were seeing a nice little ridging here across the eastern third of the United States uh, there on the pressure anomaly map. So we'll see things uh, begin to improve there uh, going into the weekend of the 22nd and 23rd. All right, let's go talk about precipitation chances. We'll take you through the weekend. We'll go out for the next 72 hours first. I like to do that. So as you can see, we got the rains here tracking along the, along the south central United States from Texas over into the southeast. Got some rains here across the areas of the northwest. A little bit of light precipitation there across New England. Let's go ahead and take this out to 240 out for the next 10 days. So the next 10 days, yeah, definitely looking a lot wetter here across the east. Look at California, boy, we're, we're really piling up the heavy rains there. Obviously, some very high uh, high snow total amounts expected with that as well. And this pattern, as we take it all the way out to the end of the 10-day with another system coming there, kind of get a general idea over the next two weeks. We're kind of drier down here across Texas, wet on the west coast, wet here in the east uh, as we go for the next two-week period, taking us to the 22nd of March. Now, as far as the snow is concerned, let me back this up once again. Uh, again, we got that weak system here across the, the, the coming out of the four corners and then through Texas. A little light snow there, uh, maybe two to four inches in some uh, spots there across the, the panhandle of Texas here going through the weekend with that upper level system. And then as we go forward, we'll watch the next one and we'll watch closely this, this one there. Again, not very impressive snow maps. We got a very lot of heavy snow out there in the west starts to pile up. This is the potential blizzard day here going into next weekend. Again, we're talking about areas of Minnesota, Nebraska, Iowa. Not high snow amounts, but again, with those winds expected to be gusting over 50, 60 miles per hour, again, blizzard conditions possible with that system as that pushes off toward the north and east. And then we'll go take it. We've got another system coming out of the Rockies there going in toward the 18th and 19th. So we'll try to see if that one uh, comes to fruition. Again, beyond 10 days, we're kind of just extrapolating at this point. But we'll take a study at the end of this run. But one thing's for certain, as I was pointing out yesterday, I'm going to point it out again. The West Coast, boy, you really got some very heavy, heavy snow melts out here measured in the feet all the way up the Cascade and Sierra Nevada areas in the, through there. Uh, I mean, Ill, uh, Idaho, Wyoming, uh, looking at Colorado, Utah, all the anybody want to do any late season skiing, uh, definitely looking very good out there in the West with some very, very heavy snow melts here expected over the next couple of weeks. Now, as far as the temperature anomaly map, the trend here is for the colder weather to stay out in the west with some uh, generally warmer here in the east. So as I go ahead and take you through this, again, watch what happens here as uh, we kind of back that up. I'm sorry I didn't reset that for you. But uh, generally looking at the reds and greens, like look at here on Tuesday 11th, for example. So pretty warm out here. Actually, not too bad out in the west. But the trend is for the western areas to kind of get colder and we stay kind of a warmer here in the east. So like here on the 15th, we're going to see our battleground set up here as that cold air pushes into that warm air out ahead of it uh, for that potential active severe weather we got to watch there going into the next weekend. So that pushes on out. We get a brief cool down in the east and it warms right back up for that next system going into the 18th and 19th. So we'll have another obviously battleground set up here as the cold air comes into that warm air again. And that's what happens. You get these series of storms to battle each other out, kind of duke it out with the warm and cold air. The only thing that's a little different here on the end of this run is that it lingers the colder air here in the east on the end of this run for several days. Uh, as this front clear on the 20th right here pushes on through. It does linger this from the 20th 
uh, right through the 21st and into the 22nd and into 23rd, Sierra, across the, uh, the eastern third of the United States. That's a little bit different than the model we were seeing yesterday. Uh, still seeing kind of chillier uh, conditions out here in the west. You got again in between storm systems, you get that brief warm up in between. So uh, there might be some might, slight modifications on the climate outlook. I'm going to show you that here uh, right now. So here's what we were seeing here from the climate prediction folks from yesterday that was issued about three o'clock in the afternoon. Again, we're talking about March 13th to the 17th, warm in the east, cool in the west. That looks pretty much on target there. Again, we're looking at that continuing here. Uh, going the 15th to the 21st. However, you notice there, again, the 21st, the 22nd, 23rd, which is just at the end of this, it was colder here across the east. So if that forecast trend continues, this might get chipped away here a little bit here or modified uh, beginning later today. We'll see what they put out here later this afternoon. Here is our six to 10 day outlook. Again, very active weather pattern, except for the south central part of the United States. They are getting a little wet weather today, but generally over the next six to 10 days below normal precipitation here. As far as the going out to 15, 21st, not much of a change here. Active here in the east, above normal precipitation here, above normal precipitation here, drier here. Now, what about the rest of the month of March? We're going to look at the three to four week period here, taking out into April 4th. Again, still showing that above normal temperature trend here in the middle of the country. Kind of near normal here out in the west here as we go from the 22nd, April 4th. And then above normal here across the Great Lakes and Ohio River Valley. Still looking at that dry trend here in Texas, like that kind of expands up here, but still looking wet up there in the Pacific Northwest as we wrap up the month of March and get ready for the month of April, which uh, again, when we get in the month of April, boy, we're talking about greater chances of instability. And if, uh, if these uh, weather patterns that we're currently seeing here in March continues into April, oh boy, it could be a very, very active severe weather season. I see, again, next weekend is going to be the big key here. Obviously, heavy rains will be concerned across areas of the Southeast. We're going to be watching the potential for severe weather and a tornado outbreak not out of the question again it doesn't look like it's going to be something that's over the top but it's definitely something to watch as we go into the 14th 15th and 16th the next weekend so please keep it tuned right here I'll keep you updated to make sure that you know uh, where we expect the active severe weather to be and also we're not done with winter weather too we still got a lot of snows here out in the west and we got a couple of opportunities for some heavy snows there across the high plains all right, that is your weather update for now. Again, if you're not yet a subscriber, please, our personal invitation, help us grow the channel as best we can. Uh, I think YouTube's doing a couple of bot clearings right now. I noticed that on my update, and I've gone down a little bit because uh, some bots that were up on my subscribers. So help me replenish those back. Please give us a subscribe if you can. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And then, as always, if you appreciate what you see, if you got a weather question, please post it down below. I'm more than happy to help answer your questions. All right, that's your update for now. Hope you guys have a great safe weekend. Be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.